Good morning. So before I do my weigh-in, I just want to go through one of the things that you really must do if you're going to do intuitive eating. Because remember, I don't calorie count. Cool. The day is... Whoop, what's that? It is Friday the 6th of May. All right. So what am I talking about? Ooh. All right. So yesterday I went well off the rails. So here's the thing with intuitive eating. For me anyway, I need to stay quite consistent with the way I eat so I can see what's changing things. So I suppose with um, intuitive eating, I'm also exercising and you don't want to change too many things at the same time. Reason? Because it, what I did is I changed the way I was eating two days ago and at the same time I also increased the amount of exercise I was doing. So what I mean by that is the exercise, rather than just doing it first thing in the morning, I was just doing 10, 15 um, incline press-ups. So it's on the stairs, so they're really easy for just knocking out. Actually, it was more like 20 reps every time. So I probably did that about three or four times yes, um, two days ago. So my body was getting used to a different way of exercising. And what that then does is demand a different ratio of foods. You know, a ratio of carbohydrate, protein, fats. Fats, no problems at all because where I've been on a fruitarian diet before, I know you can live for a long, long time with very little fat. So when I have um, a pinch of pumpkin seeds every day and a pinch of sunflower seeds every day, that curbs that one beautifully. And the fact that I managed to, for what, 17 odd days, just eat 150 to 200 grams of dry rice, then cooked, so that, that would make about six to 800 grams, depending on how much water I'd add and one carton of lentils and then after that it was a free-for-all on whatever vegetables I wanted, just as many of them as I wanted until I was full. That lasted and kept me really satisfied for a long time on one specific way of exercising, which was first thing in the morning for about 15 to 20 minutes of just doing calisthenic stuff. So that's press-ups, dips, pull-ups, all of it assisted Cool, so I've always got my feet on chairs and things because, as you know, I'm over 200 pounds and that's a lot of weight to get started with. I have friends who are super light and they can already do press-ups. I think there's give and take in every body type. For them, they then have to put on weighted vests and stuff and really work hard to try and build the muscle, whereas me, I can't even do a pull-up yet. And look, i got plenty of muscles already. Cool. Okay, anyways, regardless of all that. Uh, so that's my point. You need to be able to understand what changed that made you eat in a different way. So you can't change the way you eat and the way you exercise. You must change one thing at a time so you can pinpoint exactly what the issue is. And also, so, oh, the other thing that I get is so we ate, I ate loads of vegan sweets and all sorts. Yesterday was a proper fall off day and it was because my body was needing something, not craving something, because I didn't actually want the sweets. It's just we went out and they were there, these vegan sweeties. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll have those. So looking back on reflection, those vegan sweets would be sweet, right? They didn't taste sweet, which meant I didn't need carbs. So if I'm not needing carbs and I'm not needing fat, it would have been protein. Cool. So I shall make a point of reintroducing my one little carton of lentils again. And that should fix that. All right, there we go. So that's my little ramble. Hopefully, hopefully you found some really cool tips in that. All right, way in time, y'all. So even if I haven't gone up today, it's going to have, an, it's going to have had an effect on my weight loss. And yes, I have gone up. Cool. There you go. Yep. So, 
all I'll do is learn from what happened yesterday and get back on it today. That's all you can do. And don't beat yourself up. Try and use it as a learning experience. What did I learn from that? Um, and although the sweets weren't sweet, because they're not something I would normally have, I don't know whether normally I'd think they were sweet or not. Whereas my, my litmus test is always, I'll have a date. If, I'm, um, if my body's needing carbs, I'll have a date and it's really sweet and it's amazing, it just blows your brain. Then when I've had enough, I'll have a date and I'll go, that's not very sweet at all. And your body turns it on and off, as long as you're eating clean, that is. Um, otherwise, all that gets bypassed and you just... But if you're eating foods and you're feeling like, you know, nothing satisfying, nothing... It's because you're overly stimulating your body. Or you've just eaten too much already. Your body's full. It's going, look, I don't want carbs, so they're not going to be tasty. I don't want protein, so that's not going to be super tasty. And I don't want any fat, so that's not going to be tasty. So what do you do? You throw more salt on it and more overly stimulating foods that are going to make you go, oh, yeah, that was nice still. But then you're just faking it in a way, you know. Too much salt, too much sugar, too much oil. And I think you still find even then you go, eh, it didn't really hit the spot. What you need to do is reset and get those taste buds back to baseline. And then everything tastes amazing whilst you need it. And when you don't need it, Taste buds just turn off and you just stop eating. It's that easy, but not that easy, as you can tell from my journey. But that's the idea, and it works beautifully. All right, catch you later.